Hey everybody, welcome back to the You Should Know Podcast, Season 2, Episode 4, I believe. If it's not Episode 4, then we're just going to pretend that it is. But we've been coming back every single Monday. I know a lot of you guys were like not believing in me when I said we're going to do this every single Monday. And it has been four Mondays in a row, and we're still here with great episodes. And I think... Each episode keeps getting better and better. If you don't agree with me, you're just hating at this point. And I think this episode is going to be one of the best ones because instead of two people on the Peyton and Friends segment, we got three people. We got Ryan coming in. We got Cam coming in. We're going to talk a little bit about conspiracy theories. We're going to really dive into the social economic climate. Oh, no, we're not. We're just going to talk shit which is fine. I think that's fun enough. But uh, guys, thank you so much for all the support you've been showing me. Everybody that's subscribed to the channel, subscribed on Spotify, subscribed on Apple Music or iTunes, wherever you get it on that kind of DSP. Um, Everybody that's left reviews. I remember last episode or the episode before that, I told you guys to leave reviews on the audio platforms because it does help boost up the numbers and it helps me do amazing things. And I want to do this podcast forever and make it the best possible show I can. And when y'all do that, it helps out a lot. And the other day I went and read y'all's reviews and it's so nice. Everybody gave five stars. I think that's a little bit, you know, exaggerated, but yeah, that means the world to me. Just kidding. I do think it's a five star podcast. If there is a six star, I would tell y'all to do that. But guys, keep leaving your reviews. I read everything leave a comment on this video if you haven't already just be like this is the best podcast ever i love this episode it's the funniest one even though we're about 30 seconds in just say it and i'll respond to it i respond to every single comment and uh i get a lot of dms asking how can i be on the podcast and all you have to do is just send a video submission through instagram at psh8 i'll put your face right here on this screen and we will be talking virtually like pen pals through the internet. And your face will be on the You Should Know podcast for everybody to watch and listen to. And I think that's a pretty cool thing. But um, I have uh, I have a couple things I want to talk about this episode. And let me take a good old sip of this Starbucks so I can have a, a nice uh, 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 a hydrated palate for you guys. Hold on one second. I don't know if anybody else thinks this way, but does anyone else come to the realization sometimes like I may be a weird person? Like the other day, I realized that I do something that is very strange. I know everybody like whenever they're going to the bathroom and they're always worried if there's an intruder on the other side of the shower curtain and maybe they'll just kick the shower curtain in just in case somebody's creeping on them. Everybody does that. But I do something that I can't get anybody else to agree with me on. And I think I'm the only one that does it. I have a different way of checking if there's an intruder in the room with me if I'm sitting all alone. Say I'm in my room by myself playing the game, watching TV. I'll just out of nowhere go, you know I see you, right? That will catch any intruder off guard. Like there's no way you can continue to hide if I call you out on it. Imagine being in a room creeping on somebody. You're ready to plan an attack, hiding behind a door, a shower curtain. And all of a sudden the person you're creeping on says, you know, I see you, right? You're done. Your cover is blown. You have to come out at that point. I tend to do that every other day, every three to four business days. I will say, you know, I see you, right? It has failed 100% of the time so far, but it will not stop me because I know one time somebody will just be creeping on me, ready to take all my belongings and attack me from behind, maybe put me in a good old chokehold, and I will say, you know I see you right, and they will have to come to the forefront and deal with the repercussions. Also, I'm not good in social settings that catch me off guard. Like the other day, I was walking downtown right outside the studio. Whenever you live downtown or you work downtown, there's always people from out of town in your general location. And there was some conference going on outside. And there was a bunch of people out of town, didn't really know where they were going. So as I was walking, this man goes, hey, man, do you know where any good bars are? Me and my coworkers are just trying to get a drink. Immediately, I panicked because I wasn't expecting to have a conversation with anybody. And also, I don't really like to talk at all but I didn't want to be a bad person so I just wanted to answer this man the best way I could but I didn't really process the question I was just thrown off guard it was like a smoke grenade just went off I didn't know what was going on so I lied to this man right to his face and I was like yeah you just take a right then a left and we'll be right there I could have taken this man to an abandoned warehouse I didn't know what way I was sending him but I just wanted to answer his question I don't know why I didn't just stop in the moment and think hey where is the closest place to get a drink because I was not ready to have a social interaction in this moment I didn't know 
know where the bar was at the time. I just said, right, left, that you're going to be right there. He was like, hey, thanks, man. And as he walked away, I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I hope there is some kind of liquid wherever I just sent you. I know a lot of people found this podcast through my Juco stories on TikTok and everybody's been asking me, Peyton, we want more Juco stories. Tell us more about Juco. It's a really crazy experience. And I've just kind of been staying away from it because it was a traumatizing time for me. But I'm here to give you some more Juco stories and about the experience I had at these junior colleges. One of the main reasons why Juco is Juco is because there is no money involved in anything. Juco's are broke. That is the biggest difference between a university and a Juco. Juco's have no bread at all. Just for example, my Juco, we didn't have this nice charter bus for traveling away games. It wasn't nice air conditioning, nice big seats with leg room. We had an old school bus that they painted blue all the way around and just put a sticker of our logo on the side. It was a school bus, the same ones that elementary schools use, middle schools, high schools, a school bus. The big yellow ones just painted blue with our logo on the side of it. That was how we traveled across the state, across the country for away games. We would have to pull over on the side of our highway for somebody to hotwire our vehicle and able to get to this game. And we would have to call the school and be like, hey, we're going to be 30 minutes late because our bus is about to catch on fire. One of the worst traveling experiences I ever had being a Juco basketball player was having to sleep on the floor of a Motel 8. I don't think you understand me. Have you ever slept on the floor of a Motel 8? Have you ever had to sleep on the floor for anything? Most of the time after an away game, we would just travel back to the school the same night. But if the school was far enough away, we would just have to find somewhere to lay our heads at night. And at this night, it happened to be a Motel 8. The way our school functioned is whenever we got to this motel, our coach would just randomize roommates and just pick out of a hat and be like, you're staying with you, you're staying with you. Everybody just go to your rooms and find somewhere to sleep. This specific night, I was placed in a room with two seven footers. I don't know if you know the size of a Motel 8 bed. It's no bigger than a twin size bed. So those seven footers obviously get the right to occupy those beds. I'm only six foot seven. There is no way I'm going to be able to finagle my way onto a twin size bed with a seven footer. I'm not doing it. I'm like, coach, there's two beds in this room three men two of the men are seven foot i'm six seven where am i supposed to lay my head at night he was like just share the bed with one of them it's gonna be one night and i was like coach it's not happening we cannot fit like this He's like, Peyton, I'm sorry. There's nothing else we can do. We're spending all the budget on this Motel 8. I'm like, coach, can we not go sell Girl Scout cookies or something, wash some cars? I will do anything to get my own bed this night. He's like, it's just one night, Peyton. Do what you have to do. I'm like, do what I have to do? What do you mean? I go back into the room. Our seven footers are just sleeping comfortably on these twin size beds. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I had to go downstairs to the concierge, if that's what you even call it, at a Motel 8. And I was like, I need extra pillows and maybe a little blanket. They give me a blanket that was meant for a toddler, no one older than three years old. And they gave that to me at my grown ass age and gave me two pillows hard as bricks. And I was like, I am not gonna be able to rest tonight. I go back to my room, walking up the stairs of course there's no elevators in a motel eight i make a nice comfortable pallet on the floor in between the two beds with the seven footers sleeping comfortably like babies and i have to sleep i see cockroaches i see ants everything i'm like what has my life come to where i'm sleeping on the floor of a motel eight no one told me juco was going to be this bad we wake up the next morning and our coach has the audacity to come to me and he's like peyton how'd you sleep last night Oh, how did I sleep last night? I was sleeping next to the cast of A Bug's Life while you were just sitting up in your penthouse suite at the Motel 8. Thanks a lot for asking me how I was sleeping, coach. I'm telling you, there is nothing lavish about the Juco lifestyle. It is a grind day in and day out. One of the worst Juco memories I have actually is holidays at a Juco. That's something no one tells you about is holiday season at a Juco. Obviously, you have to stay on campus during the holidays, especially if your sport is in season. And I played basketball. So basketball goes through Thanksgiving, Christmas and everything. We were on campus at this school in the middle of the woods during holiday season. And like I said earlier, JUCOs have no funding. So what are we supposed to do during holiday season while everybody is enjoying turkeys, gifts? We're stuck at this school with no one else there. I remember Thanksgiving was coming up and everybody was wondering, what are we supposed to do for Thanksgiving? Because the cafeteria is closed, everybody's gone, we're broke, we don't know what to do. Our coach texts us in the team group message and says, everybody meet at the gym. I want to talk to you about what I want y'all to do during Thanksgiving break when everything's closed. 
we're like, okay, maybe there's hope. Maybe he's going to set something up, bring in a catering staff for us on Thanksgiving, make sure we're not homesick or having a bad time during Thanksgiving while we're away from our family and friends and the only ones on this deserted island of a campus. We're all in the gym waiting for our coach to bring us good news. He comes in the gym and says, guys, I know y'all going to be here for Thanksgiving and y'all going to be alone. The cafeteria is closed, so I don't want y'all to starve to death. We're like, oh, well, thanks for thinking about us, coach. I wouldn't want us to starve either. Our coach goes, I got y'all some supplies for this Thanksgiving break, and I'm going to give one of these things for each room. Granted, there's three people in each room. We're all college athletes. We're all grown men. We work out a lot. We eat a lot. Most of these guys are six foot five and over growing men. So obviously, whatever you're about to bring to us, it has to be a lot of it because we're going to get hungry real fast. Our coach, with all the confidence in the world, looks at us in the eyes and says, I got everybody a gallon of milk, two loaves of bread, a block of cheese, and one slab of deli meat. What are, you, what are you saying to me right now? You got one of these things for each room occupying three people. What do you, what do you, what do you mean? He's like, that should take care of y'all for the week and then the cafeteria will open and y'all can eat like regulars. Eat like regulars? What are you saying to me right now? We were like, coach, that's not gonna work. And he's like, oh, see, I knew y'all was gonna be some ungrateful motherfuckers. Ungrateful? We're trying to survive. Like, dude, what are we doing? doing coach i'm telling you juco was a nuts experience i miss it with everything in my body but it's one of the most treacherous journeys that i've ever been in in my life as some of you may know cam's about to get married and i want to tell y'all the story about how i surprised my best friend with rdc world for his bachelor party but before we do that we have a sponsor for this episode so let's go into that quick little commercial for manscaped guys support for the you should know podcast is brought to you by manscaped who is the best in men's below the waist grooming manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the performance package as you see right beside me. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer to you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code PSH at manscaped.com. Inside this package, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. That is is an insane performance package. I think my favorite thing inside of this performance package is the new Lawnmower 4.0. It has an LED light inside of it so you can get a real precise shave and it helps reduce those little gnarly nicks you get whenever you're trying to groom below the belt. It also comes with the Sick Weed Whacker, which is an electric nose and ear hair trimmer. It has proprietary skin safe technology that helps prevent nicks and snags and tugs in that sensitive nose hole that we all got. Guys, it's almost summertime and we need to smell good everywhere on our body, especially below the belt so the manscape performance package comes with this crop preserver ball deodorant and this crop reviver ball toner i'm telling you it's getting hot outside it might smell a little swampy down there this will help you out guys hey we're all adults here i'm trying to help you inside this new performance package manscaped even throws in some goodies they got anti-chafing boxer briefs which is actually really cool and they have this travel bag and you can throw all your goodies in that you get from the performance package so guys get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code psh at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code PSH at checkout. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tool for the job at Manscaped. Now back to the podcast. So it was my best friend's bachelor party and we decided to have this party in my hometown. Now this whole weekend, Cam had no idea what was going on. So everything to him was a surprise. In the planning of this bachelor party, we wanted to cater everything around him and what he likes. And one of the main things that he likes is quality time with his friends. So that first Friday of the bachelor party, we decided, hey, Friday night, we're just going to stay in the house, gamble a little bit, crack the beers out, little poker chips, just have a good time, spend time with the amigos, as they say. But I was like, how can I make this bachelor party even better than what Cam already likes? As soon as he saw the poker chips out, he was like, oh my God, this is going to be the best night of my life. I could to spend it with my friends, playing a little cards, just having fun. I was like, no, 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 we can't just do that. We need to step it up a bit, have a special experience that most people in the world can say that they have never gotten to experience. So a couple days prior, I text my friend Mark Phillips of RDC World and I'm like, hey Mark, it's my best friend's bachelor party. He's a huge fan of y'all. And that 
that first Friday night, we're just going to be sitting at the house, gambling, drinking, doing our thing. It would mean the world to me if you could just pop in, surprise him with his favorite bottle of alcohol, take your pictures, and then you could leave. Being the great guy that Mark Phillips is, he says, bro, of course, we're going to LA the next day. We can stop by the night before and just say, hey, what's up to everybody? I'm like, bro, thank you so much. It gets even better. He's like, can I bring the rest of RDC world with me? Of course you can bring the rest of RDC World with you. The more the merrier. He's fans of all of you. He loves the videos. And not only did RDC World show up to my house to surprise my best friend for his bachelor party, they decided to get him a gift of his favorite bottle. And we recorded the whole thing. So this is RDC World surprising my best friend for his bachelor party. My God. RDC World. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, bro? Congrats, man. What's good with you? I know if you mess with RC, you have to like some like anime or something. You girls my growing up. My dog, man. Favorite, 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 I was always more of a Yugi guy, but I fucked blue eyes. So shout out to my guys at RDC. Well, thank you for always looking out for me, making sure me and my guys are good. They're really some stand up dudes. I know I give them the praise every time I can, and I always will. I tell you all that. I mean, those are great guys, and they did a lot for me, and they continue to do a lot for me. So I will give them their flowers every single chance I can get. But guys, the episode just started. Let's get into uh, the friend segment of the podcast. I'll talk to y'all at the end. The You Should Know Podcast. We're back with my friends again. We got Cam. Do, 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 do. Per you. What? <laughs> what? Right. Hey, I'm going to go sit behind the camera now. That was insane. And this is Ryan. Ryan's a good friend of ours. He's new to this whole podcast. He's your yeah. first podcast. Right? I know. First podcast. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I like Ryan being on here because Ryan knows how to have a good conversation. And the stuff that we're about to talk about, Ryan is perfect for. For sure. I think I we should. So. Sure. I'm going to be silent. <laughs> I, I think we should bring up, you know, some conspiracy theories, huh? Conspiracy some, some good old, yeah. Bro, these are all, conspiracy theories are always so, like, there's very few that are, like, I deem even necessary to talk like some of them are so far-fetched it's like mm -hmm. what like what are you doing like yeah. why are ha, why have you invested but i mean but when you sit like if you truly invest your time into it and you read one of them like they can be pretty damn convincing like I, i've never been the type of dude to be like into conspiracies but there is this one that as a kid i heard i think it was like high school middle school age somebody brought it up to me and i was like holy shit yeah. this might be true and it's a it, i might say it wrong so help me out but the conspiracy that like is my favorite is the color theory and Dude. that and that's if i've heard of if it, yeah. everybody sees one color well how do, uh. it's so it's like it's i've dude i i i went down that same little rabbit hole it's crazy so the theory is like say it's it is hard to explain so like ryan <laughs> like through like ryan's eyes ryan can see and it's gonna sound far-fetched but <laughs> it's gonna sound far-fetched but through Ryan's eyes, you know, Ryan looks at an apple and he sees it as red. He calls it red. He's grown up knowing that apples are red, okay? But through Peyton's eyes, like he sees an apple is what everyone would universally call like yellow. Yeah. But because it's an apple and apples are red and you've learned that that is red in your eyes, like you deem that as red as well. In the, it in, sounds dumb. In the simplest form, it's saying, what if we all saw each color different, but called it the same thing? It's a, no, you. I can't see through your eyes. Yeah, like you my, can't see but through I his feel eyes. Like you can. The power of comparing something. Yeah. Like people can be like, red is like blood. Yeah, but and that. But like that's the that, thing, though. That's the. But like, what if you're red? What but if your red is my it, blue? Exactly. It doesn't break it because you, it because it's still red. Because all we're think about it. All we're saying is that. We're deeming something red. I don't know how you see it though. Exactly, and it, and there's no like say. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Like I don't. I can never know if you if we're seeing the physical same color, but we're always gonna be on that red spot. complete. Yeah, on the ground that that is red. Yeah, yeah. And that and that's more of like a, you know, like a. I guess. That's I guess like a informational theory, not like you know, 
the Aliens. Area 51s in yeah. the Bermuda Triangle because every time someone goes there, they don't come yeah, out. That's and one so, I haven't heard before. Like, so. yeah, that's that's like a fun, like a cool, like a cool and like there's a brain a, teaser one. Kind there, of. There's no way to test that, is exactly. there? Exactly. Oh, well, I don't know because yeah. they're dude, unless like a scientist like go. What are you saying? The shit that's out now. I don't yeah. feel like anything. They've yeah, I'm about to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to say. I'm not <laughs> putting any. Yeah, I'm not, balls I'm not yeah. putting anything Dug past it. any scientist, any lab. Like, but I mean, there's there's plenty of like, you know, Reddit Reddit uh Cause you know forms on it and YouTube videos and stuff. It's 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 weird. It's different, but it's cr like there's not even a you can't like take a side. That's not like a, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, and that messed me up for like. Th like three months <laughs> like when i first heard Jeez. it i was like what are you seeing right there what color is yeah, that? that and they were like you blue and i was you. and i was like get is, it is I, your blue my blue no but for real i i told this kid to like get you know one of those uh colored pencil boxes i like would hand it to somebody and be like show me what your red is right now and it, it would always be the same one well, of course but <laughs> that's the that's the crazy bro so You're like i'm normal another another this isn't even a theory that just like you know, struck something in my mind. Mm -hmm. A deck of playing cards. The order. Like, if you were to take a deck of playing cards out, take the Jokers out, there's 52 cards. Like, a normal deck of playing cards. And you shuffled without it. Without the Jokers? Without the Jokers. Like, you shuff, like you take the Jokers sure? out. Yeah. <laughs> there's 52 cards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going there's, 54. There's 52 <laughs> cards in the deck if you take the Jokers out. But anyway, if you take that and shuffle it, anyway, just random whatever shuffle, so the amount of cards in a deck, like the amount of different combinations, I should say, sorry, that it's like from the first card all the way to the end is 52 factorial, which means the number of how many different combinations there could be is 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 all the way to one. So the, the number ends up being like, you know, this astronomical number. I can't even like, I don't know the, the terminology behind it, but... It said that if you right now, like if we had a deck of cards right now in front of us, shuffled them up and laid out the order, that is the only time that order has ever been made in the history of the earth. That's how big that number is. And that's, that's not really, yeah, it's kind of creepy. Wait, what the hell? It's kind of creepy. Yeah, that is. It's not like necessarily a conspiracy theory, but that's how large that, more just people, think about it. If you shuffle just cards, then. Yeah, just. Like you need to. <laughs> <laughs> said, we need to get with it. <laughs> no, but like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just think think about how big that number is. 52 times 51 times 50, 49, 48, 40, all the way down. I, I stress out when I have to do long division. <laughs> long yeah. division. With eighth the, grade was the last time I was good at math. Dude, with the freaking, <laughs> like the uh, the little bracket that you're talking about that? Yeah. Like yeah. When you put the number inside. Yeah. The thing, <laughs> I cheated all through school from middle school all the way to college. But I have something that I have something I have something that's better than that. It's not a conspiracy theory, but I want you guys to listen up. Okay. Real quick. It's about to mess you up. Are y'all ready to hear that? Okay. Let's go. For, all right. You know your ABCs, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A B C D. Everybody knows. You have it. to sing the song though. Yeah, you have to. That's the thing. Do you know you don't have to say your ABCs in order? Like th that's not a rule. Like you can literally be like A D F. Like the the alphabet doesn't oh, have wow. an order. Isn't that insane? No, dude, that is. It's definitely to <laughs> me not as crazy as the cards. No, no, no. But, but that is crazy. <laughs> no, but listen, like you know, one, two, three, yeah, four. That 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 is a law. You have to go one, two, three, four because that's how the world that's works. How that's how can. math works. Yeah. With your ABCs, there's no order. You don't that's, have to. Yeah, you could put you could put A right by Z. No one's gonna. You're not gonna go to you're prison. Not in but trouble. if you would have been that kid in grade school, you'd have been a dummy. Like, <laughs> no, you, no, they yeah. would have locked you up. Yeah, but like, they would, isn't, they would have sent you to the class. Isn't that so weird? Like <laughs> the class. Yeah. Is it that A L P R? Like they would like get him out of here. Is it that so weird? Like that. Why is that the social construct of? Dude, that's a ABCs. lot of things. That's a lot of things. But that's uh, maybe not. But I can't think of other examples. But I feel like there's a lot of unwritten rules and laws of society that are just followed just because it's a thing and people follow it. And people want to be considered normal. Yeah. To the best of their ability, I guess. Yeah. I I can I will vow from this day forward to not sing that song in that order. In, no, I will go A straight to Q. I swear to you. A Q B G. Idiot. Yeah. I have to sing that. Song. I have to break the the, the social well, construct. Yeah. I I just feel like that I, is different. Bro. I don't know when people see this. I hope that like that boggles their mind too because that has messed me up. That you don't have to say that in order. That is different. And, ta um, and talking about social constructs like by itself, 
isn't the like the 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 structure of school it's insane so bad. because so you bad. you have you have like so bad kids in one building for eight hours a day like 30 minutes of lunch i mean but th- can you imagine now as an adult having to s- i know you have to yeah, work it's work yeah <laughs> you literally work no, but, 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 eat real quick back no to no, no but there's a freedom with work you can leave you can you can do whatever and especially now you can work from home but like as a kid you are stuck in a classroom for eight hours listening to a person talk and shout out to the teachers because they're very important in our society but (laughs) but it's just like it's nuts like i can't imagine now as a 23 year old kid i already have like you know i can't sit down for too long like the only reason i'm able to do a podcast is because i can be loud and talk about whatever the hell i want to but like like i can't imagine now how i was like a, a 14 year old sitting in a classroom listening to like a like a 40 year old tell me math i mean you know what i'm saying i i I get that but it's but so when you think of like that side of the spectrum i feel like you have to always consider the other and you gotta like school like that's college is where that becomes completely optional like you know grade school k through 12 you're required to go Mm -hmm. and it's free like you have to, I mean, you pay, I of course your parents pay taxes, it's but because people have to work eight hours a day. So I was, I was, I was just leave, about to say, the kids have to go I was, to I was just day. about to say, and then college. So grade school, K through 12, you're required to go. It's free college, not required. And you have to pay. So that's why it's like a lot of people, they immediately know if college is for them or not. Like if you know what they want to do requires it. If they are, they don't have to like, you know, it's a lot easier, but in grade school, I was going to say, you got to think of the other spectrum too. Like, now due to covid and just how the world changed like of course there's a lot of more like um work from home opportunities remote jobs stuff like that so parents can take advantage of it but you know when we were kids it's like mom and dad got up went to work Mm -hmm. so it's like what else who if you don't have a grandma or a grandpa or a relative that can literally watch you and i guess like homeschool you if that's your thing then where what else are you going to do as like a six-year-old kid you know it's kind of like a it's kind of a break for parents too. And no one, no one should see it as a break from their kids and stuff. Like school is important. I'm not saying it's not, but like if I, if I could choose when I was a kid, of course you'd be like, Oh, maybe not. But me experiencing like the workforce, I feel like now I'm like, I would rather go to school as a kid for yeah, like three to four hours and go fucking off <laughs> instead of running it out for eight hours a day. When I, when I have like, Oh, you have to have an hour lunch, a uh, two thirty minute breaks. It's yeah. like state law. Yeah. It's like, why don't we cut that out? And I just work for half the time and get Straight. out of here. Dude, I've always said that. I got always. A, I got a hot take. I don't think this is going to be controversial. Hot take. I don't think school. Hot take. <laughs> the hot take is, I don't think school is important <gasps> past the 10th grade. Dun, dun. And dare I say the ninth grade. Because I feel like. I mean. There's a once you start putting the alphabet inside of math equations, that's yeah, not important. And the only thing I feel like is important in school at that age is history, and even the history we know is like it's super skewed on what they teach. Exactly. exactly. But it's a, and 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 you know, the only important thing in English is like you learning how to format papers and stuff. But that's all for college, which is optional anyway. That's what I'm saying. Like why? Like, I like the more you think about it. But kind of like you said, like, I completely agree. Early, like, early elementary education, like, K through 6, mm-hmm. is, like, beyond important. Right. That's where you get social cues, yeah. learn how to interact with other people. Like, you're a, you're a young human being growing up and learning. Maybe I should have took that more seriously. Back. Yeah. That, <laughs> no, like, like, thinking back on it, you can do, like, high school is kind of like, it's just, kind of like you said, it's like a, pr- it's a prep for college. And it's just because, you know, everyone hits, you're like 14 and you're like, dude, I'm grown. Like, you know, of course yeah. you're not, but it's like, you're in that mindset. And it's just like what you learn as a young kid, I feel like translates so more and you might not necessarily like remember every interaction, but it definitely molds you into who you are. Like, yeah. because high school, you're already kind of, you're, you are who you are because of what happened earlier. Exactly. And of course people go through changes in high school and have complete sh- like culture shocks and whatever, but it's like you said, like, dude, school, it's like we're, we have letter, we have, you know, all this algebra, algebraic equations, all these. It's like yeah. kids that want to be engineers, 100%. You need it. It's great. you got to learn it. 
Go for it. Yeah. Kids that want to do something social works and need papers and stuff like that. Yeah, you got to have perfect essays. And the the only like I know devil's advocate what people are going to say is well at that young age you don't know so that's why they're teaching you yeah. everything but at the same right. time bro it's just like throw some things in there in school everyone's going to need but it, stuff you need exactly need. I, I never learned how to do my taxes taxes mortgages ne like and this might be far-fetched but in reality is it really like teach everyone how to change a flat tire right. like real like real things that can happen like i'm going to work poof, bang say say your phone doesn't work you can't like what are you going to do yeah like yeah. I get probably legit, probably nine out of 10 people, if they blew a flat on the side of the road, would just sit there. Yeah, until it's called survival, AAA. Survival class. <laughs> yeah, for real though. No, it's but like, like there should be a life survival class, like stuff you need to know, like street smarts. There's stuff yeah. you need to know. And, and some people don't have that at home, like parents or- at all. Yeah. Like now at our school, they're doing carpentry, yeah. like HVAC, yeah. welding. That's and what I'm just saying. like, if I had that option- I would've be, took all of those. I'd be pr doing pretty well and right It's like, now. no, yeah. if, and there's no shots to anyone. Like anybody listening but it's like i wouldn't have went to art class i would have Bro. went to learn how to go weld or something yeah like, even if like no i don't want to be a welder but it's like that's to me the option yeah it's more that's more functional than like turning a bar of soap into a cat like i'd much rather exactly. know how to use power tools and stuff that like, was more yeah. of like i think it was like a like a like a like a social construct of like you have to like there is no reason i should have had to stay after hours at school to finish an art project yeah like, like ever, i ever. i had to do that all the time because i just wasn't i can't i can't color in the lines like still as a 23 year old man i can't do that i don't need to do that like i'm never gonna like i'm not having a meeting with the picasso estate to see if i'm gonna yeah. get a job like i don't yeah. need that Ooh, i like it picasso <laughs> But there's a back to conspiracy theories. Name another artist, yeah, <laughs> uh, Michelangelo. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, the Ninja Turtle, yeah, Van Gogh. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, this this fucking guy. Am I right? I couldn't tell you more. <laughs> what if he was like fucking Drake? Yeah, I'd be like, huh? I but um, I can't, yeah, I'd go and do there's that. a another conspiracy theory that we talked about off camera a couple of days ago, and it was about, and I know this is a touchy subject because of like this is just for fun, guys. Like we're not like here to like really solve the mysteries of the world yeah, but we're just here to have fresh. a good conversation and like talk about like the stuff that you just hear the feedback like. yeah we just there's ideas that are brought up and i think it's fun to talk with your friends about the different ideas and like pick them apart we're not here to solve the mysteries of the world but cam brought something up about the pyramids that i think oh. you saw on like a podcast before but tell me about so that me, so me big like not necessarily history buff but i've always like even since young just loved like roman era you know greek era stuff like that egypt like ancient all the ancient civilizations that you know were huge and like where the world was at that time and the pyramids so the great pyramids are just such like there's literally people that devote their life on learning this studying this living there like ev just everything to try to figure out about this pyramid and it's just so um fascinating to me <laughs> what just happened? I almost choked on my spit. Bro, I thought you were giving me like a boring cue. Like yeah. you were sitting there like... That's like the worst like, spit to like, like choke. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were sitting spit. there like, jeez. I was like, dude, you just told me... Did no, you just see the panic in my eyes, bro? Your whole body, you were like... I was like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> okay. But, uh... Jesus Christ. The So, so basically, like, the um conspiracy, if you will, it's like, how was the pyramid made? So... There's several paths, and to break it down simply, the Great Pyramid uh, is enormous. It's like over, I think, 400 feet. It's like stands over 400 feet tall, Ma like millions, millions of pounds of these stones. And then it's also said all the way down to the, so you go f start from the top down to the base. If any of the big blocks at the base were adjusted inches, then the top wouldn't meet at an apex. Mm. Inches. And you got to think, this is way back ancient civilization. And I'm like, of course, they had their technology and stuff. They didn't have cranes. How much, were, how, how heavy were the, the plates inside? Oh, yeah. And so then, so the pyramid on the outside is already fascinating. But then when you go on the inside, there's like tombs for the pharaohs. And like, with like seven, they said 70 tons. 70 tons. Jesus. Like, that's... Just think about that. 70 ton... I'm aware there was that many slaves pulling on a rope. Slabs. Exactly. See, but... Okay, like but how this, many people were on Earth in that time? So this, so this is my, so this is kind of the stance I take. Like, and so based, back to the thing. There's like, was this truly built on millions of hours of of just slave work, or people love to say like it's aliens because like it simply doesn't make sense. And like another thing, like the coordinates 
like the coordinates of the pyramid align perfectly with like the like the coordinates of the pyramids is the exact same number like all the way to like the 20 or 30th number of the speed of light stuff like that like cra just crazy <laughs> and you can call that a coincidence but it's like if it goes 30 numbers deep whatever and then i don't know how you get the number of the yeah. speed of light but anyway there's just so many things pile up like that but the um the way i i think one i'm not saying aliens aren't real or necessarily but i don't like to always go down that path like i don't i i feel like that's not giving credit where credit's due i truly think that we as like in this day and age can't comprehend how much work could be done by endless endless hours of slavery and slave work like and i know it sucks and it's not like yeah, it's not a thing but it's like imagine every single day thousands like thousands on thousands of people doing to, one job yeah. like you know it's no, yeah. what could they not accomplish mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so that's that's well, the stance i take the pyramids <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just I, I just like but but it's mind-boggling like my rebuttal to that and we talked about this whenever you first brought it up is like how do we know that that was always the case that there was those plates inside that oh yeah cradle. so, so i was said, yeah i was saying yeah i'll fucking kill you <laughs> but uh, i was saying that uh um uh, it might not have been that stable back then yeah. now it's a big tourist spot you know everybody wants to go <laughs> visit the pyramids and like it brings in a lot of money each year why didn't why can't we just say that down the line when we got the technology they just got these cranes and put them in and they closed off the attraction for like a month or whatever and they did or a he's week. trying to say it was like money hungry yeah, like it's like at one point in time they to come they to then yeah they then so they then like rocks. went in and put in these seventy ton beam. I'm like that's too much work. absolutely not. No way. First off, it's not that's impossible because so the slippery. entrances of the pyramid, mm -hmm. no machinery can fit in there. Like it's large enough for a person to walk in. You're saying they'd have to put these things in. It's already on the inside. Whenever so for your theory, why can't to they work, reconstruct the? pyramid do you hear yourself i For hear your myself well is you're, that crazy you're saying they're yeah, taking pieces off buddy. <laughs> you're saying they're taking pieces off making this huge hole in the middle of the great pyramid of giza and then putting these beams these 70 140,000 pounds of slabs yeah no i'm just saying like I, I don't think it's crazy to say that it was reconstructed so that it could be i I just can't imagine that human beings could put I want you to say I, seventy to seven hundred tons. What did you say? Seventy tons. Seventy tons of of metal or whatever the plates are inside of there. Like as I just I can't and wrap it my mind. It has to be man made. Hundred percent. It is. Whenever I think it of aliens, I'm like, what makes you think aliens are our height? <laughs> like our weight, our build. That's a, that's like, another. That's why would an, an alien be so minuscule? That's this, true. At that point, yeah. Why would you be human size? No, it might just be like. <laughs> that, dude, that, that's another <laughs> thing. Another like theory of it is like the um, uh, I might get roasted. I don't know how to say it, but like Nephilim or whatever, like giants. It's like in the Bible and mm. stuff like that too. But it's like back then there were like like humans, but they were giants. Yeah. They were said. I don't know if they were, lived like nine hundred years. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they were said to be like. Um, like half, yeah, whatever, like angel. I don't know, but it's like they were very large and very strong. And yeah, apparently, I but but I, but the reason I said that I was like they're so strong, so big. Why were they a slave too? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? They would have ruled, hopefully, revolted dumber, at one point. But bigger, but dumber. Yeah, Could like like the like, tip like a typical leave. troll in like any movie <laughs> yeah. is just like, like huge, but there's like slow and stuff. And yeah. well, I think that was a, a great conversation. I think the people are going to enjoy that, and hopefully they leave their opinions in the comment section. But guys, thank you so much for coming on this episode, Ryan. Did you have fun? I did. I did. What colors this shirt? What colors this yeah. shirt? <laughs> what colors my shirt? All right, guys. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you can get a podcast, you'll be able to listen to this. Guys, keep sending in your videos. I really appreciate it. And remember, one out of 10 koala bears don't make it home to Christmas. Follow us all on Instagram. It's going to be linked below. I'll see you later.